we are going to prove here the first theorem of uh, Hohenberg and Cohn, where basically says that the density, the electronic density, is going to be the basic variable to get any property of the solid. Okay, let's remember which is the theorem one. The external potential is uniquely determined, except for a constant, by the ground state particle density. So, and of course, uh, if the external potential is determined uniquely by this uh, ground state electronic density, then also the Hamiltonian, and from the Hamiltonian we can have everything, any property of the, of the solid. Therefore, it means that the ground state electronic uh, density uh, determines, could determine any property in the system. Okay, let's uh, follow this uh, procedure. You will see that uh, even though here the statement is the theorem, it uh, has a very important consequences, you will see that the proof is really simple. So we are going to follow the following uh, procedure. Suppose that there were two different external potentials, and we're going to, we are going to call them Vx1 and Vx2, uh, leading to the same ground state density, N0. Okay, and these external potentials are different. Then we have that the Hamiltonians associated with these external potentials are going to be different as well. And of course, if we have a two different Hamiltonians, the ground state of this Hamiltonian, the two Hamiltonians, are going to be different. And the ground state we are going to call ground states of this Hamiltonian in the following way. C1 is going to be the ground state of Hamiltonian H1. And H1 is the Hamiltonian that includes the external potential Vx1. And C2 is going to be, in the same way, the ground state wave function of the uh, Hamiltonian A2. And this is the one that includes the external potential Vx2. So we have that the ground states of the Hamiltons are different. However, considering the statement we are making at the beginning, the ground state density associated to these two different ground state uh, wave functions, uh, it's going to be the same. Actually, it can happen, even though the ground state uh, wave functions are, going, are different, the ground state uh, density, the electronic density, they can be the same, in the sense that the ground state density, we know that it's a kind of average obtained by these ground state uh, wave functions. Therefore, even though we can imagine many different examples where the ground state wave functions are different, however, the particle density or the ground state density is the same. Okay, so we are in these situations where we have a different external potentials with different associated uh, ground state wave functions, and we have the following. So, as here C2, it's not the ground state of H1, we have the following relation here, where basically we are saying here is the following. Here we have as C1 is the ground state of H1, here we have this is just basically E1, which is the ground state energy uh, of Hamiltonian and H1, uh, which has the ground state wave function C1. And as, as we have said at the beginning, that C2 is not the ground state of H1, then we have that this E1, this one, it's lower than this one here. Here we have the average of H2 considering the state C2. C2 is not the ground state of H2, it's 1. And therefore, considering the variational principle, then we have the average of uh, the Hamiltonian considering any wave function, in this case C2, it's going to be always higher than the ground state energy. So that's the relation we have. Okay, and we're going to write that in a different way. So first, this term here, we are going to write in a different way. This term is this one, okay? This is the average of the Hamilton H1 calculated with the wave function C2. And H2, H1 here, we are going to write in the following way. H1, H2, sorry, H1 here, it's going to be H2 
2 uh, plus 8 1 minus 8 2 so therefore considering that way of writing that we have that the first term is going to correspond to this one here and then we have a second contribution coming from this difference here you can see here the difference of these two Hamiltons so writing this way we have that this term here of course this is going to be E2 which is the ground state of a2 Hamiltonian considering that the ground state wave function is C2. So this is E2. And on the other hand, considering that the difference in the Hamiltonian is just coming from the external potentials, then we have that the difference on the Hamiltonian H1 minus A2 is going to be just the Vx1 minus Vx2. And we are making, when you are making just uh, this uh, uh, average, considering uh, calculated on the uh, state C2, then and as the density probability associated with C2 is just N0, then we have that this expression here, this average here, can be written in this way, in this way. Where here we have the difference on the these external potentials and we have the ground state particle density. So basically, considering that relation here and considering that this second term here can be written in this way, we have that E1 is lower than E2 plus this term here. So in order to derive that expression, we have just started here from this E1. So we can do exactly the same, but instead of starting with this E1, we can start with E2. And if we are doing that, if we start with E2, we can, uh, and following the same procedure, we are following, we are getting this relation here. So in this case, what we are getting is the following E2. It's lower than E1 plus this integral here, where we have Vx2 minus Vx1 times N0 and integrated that. So considering these two expressions here, this one and the one derived before, what we are doing now is that we are summing this plus this one. If we are doing that, if we sum these the two, we have that the contribution associated with external potential this has vanished. And we are getting that relation here. This is the relation we are getting. So E1 plus E2, it's lower than E1 and E2. That's a contradiction. It's impossible, right? So what does it mean? It means that our first statement and the first statement is just this one here, this first statement we make, that cannot be true. It basically means that we cannot have these two external potentials associated with this uh, ground state density. So that basically means that considering the contradiction we have just reached, it means that there cannot be two different external potentials differing by more than a constant, which give rise to the same non-degenerate ground state charge density. So, according to that, it means that what we have proven is the following, that uh, the external potential is uniquely determined by the ground state particle density. However, and this is true, we don't have this First theorem basically says that this uh, ground state density uniquely determines this external potential. However, there is no prescription of solving, of getting how uh, this is determined.